Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I want to take our time today and try to answer some questions that you guys have asked about our overwintering setup and a couple of other topics of interest to you. And I think this will be helpful to you in getting a little bit more detail about how this process of using the low tunnel works. So let me give you some more information about that today and I hope this is good and helpful for all of you. Our first question is from Anita House. She says... You mentioned trimming your perennials back before storing for the winter. Does that include hydrangeas? Now, I don't normally trim back my hydrangeas until after they are dormant. And the reason for that, there's a couple of reasons for that, but the primary reason is because I'm probably going to use at least some of those cuttings as hardwood cuttings in the winter. Also, you have to be careful cutting back your hydrangeas this time of year going into, going into winter, depending on the variety, or you'll cut the buds off of them for next year and they won't bloom. So especially with the macrophylla hydrangeas, you don't want to prune those this time of year really for any reason. You're going to lose all blooms next year. But with the paniculatas and your oak leaves, those bloom on old and new wood. So with those, there's not an issue, but I don't cut those back with my other perennials. Another question comes from Growing Our Retirement. Wondered if the tubes you fill with water for pool covers would be a good way to secure the bottom of the plastic. So yes, anything that is heavy and will remain in place through the winter months is fine to use as weight to hold down those edges of your plastic. As I mentioned when we made that video the other day, you can use bricks, you can use pots of potting soil, you can use larger potted plants, lumber, anything you have. You can shovel sand down the edges of it, just anything that's heavy and will stay in place to hold that down. You know, you get a lot of high wind probably during the winter and you don't want any wind to get under the edges of your plastic at all. So you want them held down really securely, get it as tight as you can side to side and end to end with whatever you have and it will be sufficient to take care of that plastic through the winter months. Uh, next question, Carla Barton asks, what about watering them during the winter? Now the issue of watering comes up a lot. If you go through my comments you'll see this question multiple times and Here's the thing about plants covered with a low tunnel in the winter is they need almost no water at all. And I don't literally mean zero, but what happens inside that low tunnel is that it's very humid in there. So all the ground moisture under the plants and in the pots, as it evaporates, it, it condenses on the plastic on the inside. So when you if you open your plastic, for example, and take a peek inside there, once it's been there, it's dripping from the inside. So you get the moisture dripping right back into the pots. Not only that, but plants just don't need moisture during the winter when they're not actively growing, when their leaves are not doing anything. They just don't need any moisture. So your moisture loss from inside your tunnel is very, very minimal. Now, once in a while, you know, pull your plastic back. If you go through a period of warm days, like we certainly do here in the South, just pull your plastic back and have a look. If things look dry, just wet it. Uh, it's not brain surgery taking care of plants in a low tunnel over winter, but just understand your local climate's going to vary. Uh, your exact setup is going to vary. So just take a peek at them once in a while and if they need water, water them. The next question comes from Marlene Mullet. She said, thanks for the video. Would an unheated greenhouse also work to store perennials in the winter? I have some in four inch pots, wondering if they would be okay zone five. So here's the thing about an unheated greenhouse. It would probably work fine. My concern is what kind of plastic or what kind of covering do you have on it? If it's clear plastic, it's gonna get hot inside that greenhouse in the winter, even when it's cold outside. That's how greenhouses work and that's the effect of that clear plastic. It's just like your car when the sun shines into your parked car even on a cold day but the sun is bright it gets hot inside your car so it's probably not the best thing to put them in an unheated greenhouse if you're covered with clear plastic. If you've got white plastic over it it doesn't get near as hot in there that reflects more of the sun than it does absorb it. So that's why you use the white plastic so it doesn't get so hot in your low tunnels. So hopefully that's helpful towards answering that. And this is not so much a question that somebody asks. It's just something that is worth mentioning on my end. Depending on your climate zone there's always tons of variables involved with any discussion about nursery, but you may not even need to cover your perennials at all in the winter. I've done lots of perennials in the past that I didn't cover 
at all. I just left him sitting out in the weather over winter, and that's a fair question to ask, and my success rate has been kind of uh, so-so over winning perennials depending on the plant. So my thinking is this will increase my odds of having a higher number of plants survive the winter in a healthy way and ready to go next spring. So some days I'll just take the plastic off in these weeks where we only get down into the 40s at night and it's not even cold and you know in the 50s and 60s during the day I'll just leave them uncovered and water them if they need it, let it rain on them if they need it, and not be overly concerned about all the exacts about all of it, but it really depends on your zone. So the colder you are, probably the better your plants are going to do, or the greater the need for covering your plants would be. And another question that I was asked was, what do you do about snow on your low tunnels? Like, is it going to collapse your low tunnels? And so here's the thing, I live in North Alabama and a lot of what I do in the nursery, I'm not thinking about snow loads because we don't deal with that a lot here. Yes, we get some snow, we get some ice storms, but we don't even get them every year. So basically what I would recommend is this, if you're building a low tunnel the way that I built it on the previous video, use more bows. Don't spread them out quite as far. Also, you might connect them across the top with a cross connector and just so they're all tied together and that's going to add a little bit more support to your plastic. Another thing that you can do is make sure that you use a heavier plastic, like a six mil or heavier plastic. That's just how plastic is graded and the higher that number is, the heavier your plastic is. Also, low tunnels can be built not using the same type of bow, but they can be built with something like a concrete mesh reinforcement so it, it looks more like fencing like uh, roll, uh, fencing on a roll and I built low tunnels with that before the problem that I have with those is is that they're not very tall you're working with an eight foot long piece of material there and by the time you take that and arch it over the arch is not very tall if all of your plants are pretty short then it works fine but I'm going to have some larger shrubs under my tunnels this year and in order to cover more square footage the way that I'm doing these, it's wider as well as taller. Uh, for my application, it just seems to work better. But just do whatever you have to do to just beef your tunnel up a little bit. Think about the points on it that are likely to fail. It's going to be the plastic that would fail or it would be the actual structure itself that would collapse. Do whatever you have to do to make those stronger if you live in an area where snow is an issue. Now also worth mentioning, if we were having a snow forecast here and say we were supposed to get six inches of snow, I very well may just go uncover all of it, let them get buried in snow, then cover them back up. Snow is an excellent insulator and then usually the coldest air follows after the snow so then just get them covered back up and they're going to fare just fine doing something like that. On other subjects aside from the low tunnel this question going back to my video I think it was two weeks ago that I did on wholesale plants that I had bought in. I'm not going to read the whole question but basically it's more of a statement. It says this is not good information about how much a person can make money in this or any other business citing that when I gave you guys my examples of buying in plants, growing them out, and reselling them, and what the difference was between those two that I didn't include anything in there about all of my costs for everything. Well, so here's the thing about that. True enough, on that video, I did not. I mentioned it in that video that there are other expenses, but I've done video after video after video on my channel showing all of these expenses and giving you guys breakdowns on exactly how much it cost me to build a shade house, to have my dirt and gravel work done, to put my irrigation in, to buy my land, how much pots cost, how much my potting soil cost, how much my fertilizer cost. We've done videos on all of that stuff, and I'm not pretending that any of that is free or that those aren't real expenses. They absolutely are. I was giving you guys that video as kind of a thought exercise and a math exercise just to give you an example of what you might expect to buy a plant for and sell a plant for and what the difference is and what you can buy them and sell them for with a little bit of growth on the plants put in to increase the value that you can get for them. I didn't mean in any way to be deceptive about that and if I came across as trying to deceive you about how much money that you can make, I apologize for that but if you're used to watching videos on my channel, you know that all of that information and more can be found in these videos. Flora Design 1 comments. I can't believe how established it's looking there now. Well, we appreciate that very much. And in all honesty, I can't either. We've come a long way 
in a very short time and we've got a lot more to do. So y'all pray for us and y'all stay tuned. On a different note, EJ4753 comments, definitely honest and transparent view of the business if you want to get into it. Thank you for giving us this piece of knowledge so we can make knowledgeable decisions. And really, that is exactly what we're trying to do with this channel. We cannot cover every single contingency and every single circumstance for every single person's individual and unique location. It's not possible for us to do that. But what we do try to do is give you an honest and accurate and firsthand look at what it's like getting a nursery started and what you might expect and hopefully some things to avoid and what some things cost and how long certain things take or at least how long it's taking us. So in that, always take it and adapt it to your situation, adapt it to your market. If you think our prices are crazy high, crazy low, just totally inaccurate, then you figure out what those things are and what they cost in your area. But that they are for us all very real. And that's all we're trying to be is transparent about what we're doing with the growth of our nursery. And finally, this from EJ Fishes 7610 Craig, will you be selling bare root arborvitas to your YouTube community as you did last season? Yes, we will be offering those arbor arborvitas, the green giants, for sale again this winter. I don't know when that'll be. That partly or mostly depends on the weather. Don't know when we're going to have a hard freeze, but we got to get these arborvitas completely dormant. And here we are. It's October the 26th today as I'm videoing this. And, you know, it'll probably be December, early December, something like that before they're ready to go. But any information pertaining to selling arborvitas wholesale from our nursery to you, our viewers, will be posted on our YouTube channel. And we will keep you guys informed of that as that time gets closer. Well, all right, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. Thanks for the questions. I try to answer as many questions as I can. Sometimes it just gets to be too much and a little too time-consuming to respond to everything, but hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. Also, if you want to scroll down through the comments, leave your own comment, leave your own question at, on this video or any other video, I try to get to all of them. Some of them I don't see, particularly on older videos, but I try my best, so... I appreciate y'all watching and being interested in what we're doing here and hopefully learning something as we go. And I love y'all, and we'll see you on the next one.